Today we're watching the best Fortnite players from every single season and we're going to go through 27 seasons in this video brought to you by Marin TM. So be sure to subscribe and show him some love, but let's watch and see if we agree with these choices. Today I'm going over the best players from every Fortnite season ever. Becoming the very best in a video game with over 500 million registered players is literally one of the hardest things to achieve in the world. But Absolutely agree. if you're agree. one of the few who makes it to the very top, you can reap some wildly comfortable rewards. Financial freedom for the rest of your life, major amounts of respect, and the feeling of really having accomplished something extraordinary. Without yapping too much, if you enjoy content like this, consider using code MarinTM in the Fortnite item shop. Once we hit 1,000 users, I'll do daily videos just like this one for seven days straight. And we're currently oh, sitting a lot at of work. 898 users, which honestly means the world. So thank you so much to all of you who has put in the code. Season 0 was a test for Fortnite's Battle Royale mode, and the game wasn't popular at all back yes, then. Remember Not Grimms? to say that nobody that later became famous didn't play because a particular someone by the name mr grims stands out to be the undisputed i remember mr grims zero. being really good in uh in general his ability to consistently PUBG. bang out 10 to 12 he was hours extremely good in PUBG. Such a phenomenal player in addition to the fact that he had previously played games like h1c1 and killer instinct at the very peak of professional play he was one of the very first players in the world to drop this shotgun hitting for this far away is crazy and likable sadly though mr grims's stays as a fortnite player were short lived, as he simply didn't enjoy the building mechanic. However, being able to only play the game for a few seasons and having the title as one of the best to ever do it, he was really, he was really of. good, On top of that, especially Grimm's season zero wise. A streamer during his days of playing Fortnite because of both his personality and skill, having months averaging as much as 6,000 viewers with more than 300 hours stream. I feel like he had even more viewers during PUBG era. He his ass off to make it work and financially speaking, he set himself up for years to come. With OG Fortnite's return, Grims has been playing and streaming Fortnite for the first time in years. Years, so it will be interesting and extremely nostalgic to watch him through the season. Ninja went for an extremely high risk, high reward life decision when Fortnite came out. You see, he was already averaging around 5,000 viewers playing games like PUBG and H1C1, which he also played at the very highest level. But he decided to exclusively play Fortnite as he saw the potential in the game before so to say anyone else. Taking a chance, it paid off for Ninja, as we all know, and he was objectively speaking the best player He's got in the world 20 bomb in, in this, in this match right now. players like High Distortion, Nick Mercs and Grimms could also be argued to be the best players of this season. But what made Ninja different... High Distortion was definitely on, on a different level, by the way, because he was one of the first people that I saw that would actually play solo squads and actually win. Like a lot of play, a lot of people did not touch solo squads, but HD was Very playing solo level. squads even all the time. Even played for ten hours straight, even when he didn't have a good night's sleep, or even when his chat was being awful. Regardless of circumstances, Ninja was ready to stream and perform at the highest level. Whereas players like Nick Mercs, Grims, and HD had incredibly high highs, maybe even higher than Ninja, but also way lower lows, where they would go on losing streaks, lose their temper, and overall have some bad periods. What made Ninja such an amazing player and streamer was that he was the most consistent player. In the world. You could tune into his stream and know that he would put on a show, win games, and drop a ton of elims. His hours put into the game, as well as his past with other battle royales, really made him, at the time, the most exceptional player. Season 2 So far, I agree with this list name written all over it. Myth was one of the first players to understand Myth. how to use the building mechanic to his advantage, both when playing aggressively and defensively. And a lot of the building strategies we saw in later seasons was thanks to him. Myth was also first place on the wins leaderboards for quite some time. And he was a massive grinder. Dude, both that scar is shooting so fast. Speaking. Being as creative as Myth was in season two is extremely admirable even to this day. And very few players have been able to replicate the level of inventiveness he showed at that time period. You have to understand this man literally invented one by oneing and with that he, he more did or less he did and, and one of the big things with myth that people don't know is that he he was building on fortnite before battle royale was a thing like he was playing save the world pretty consistently so he had that experience of building and he took that into BR. As we know it today, Myth had such a big impact on the game that without him, the game wouldn't have developed to become as it is today. Going into season three, a rather underrated player by the name Cloxy was one of the first in the world to drop 30 plus Elim wins in solo versus squads. Also I'm gonna be honest, I didn't watch record. a lot of Cloxy in the early days. I kind of started watching him when he was playing with Tifu. So I don't, I, this is, this is like 
new information to me. I'm not too familiar with his time. early uh, all well, the characteristics Fortnite needed career. to become a phenomenal Fortnite player. And he also had a very similar past to both Grimms and Ninja, with that he had also played H1C1 and PUBG at a high level. Now, you could make the argument that Ninja was the best player in Season 3, and I wouldn't hate on that opinion at all. But looking back at Season 3, if there was one player I would trust to clutch a very important situation, that would be Cloaksy. Cloaksy was him very skill clutch. Set in Season very 3 clutch. over anyone else in the world. The attributes... I want to say this though after season three you start seeing some of the uh, like some of the current pros or chapter one pros start to kind of pop up i think we'll see i think we'll see tifu in season four here him the best in the world at this time was the fact that he was calm regardless of the situation he was in he had an extremely positive yet highly competitive mentality always striving to become the best player he could be additionally he wasn't scared to challenge himself he enjoyed it and as a result he became better than everyone because of how well-rounded kiloxi was he got a request from face clan to build a squad consisting of three other competitive players this is where got to play with a certain someone and start one of the I best I got invited as Phase Clan as well More on that later. around season this time was a super interesting season as this was the first time Epic attempted to host Hamlet's. a competitive event. Now most of you probably won't remember this one but it was called the Solo Showdown the Solo Showdown was an event where hundreds of thousands of people competed for a chance to win some V-Bucks and was really good invite for the next season. I don't know if he was ever Spanish. regarded as best Tournament in the world. Was simple. Play I know he games, was solid and though. However those games went was your position on the leaderboard. Obviously the more wins and elims, the more points. One player stood far above the rest, and I'm not sure you'll be able to guess who that was, but feel free to pause the video and have a go at it in the comments below. That was it Hamlet? That was Twitch underscore Aiden, oh, Aiden. C, okay, or more okay. commonly known as Ghost Aiden. All the players I have talked about until now have been on keyboard, but Aiden was, in season 4, the best Fortnite player in the world, and on top of I, that, I like low-key agree with this, especially considering controller didn't have any of the settings that it has right now. Bizzle was a player, unlike anyone else in season five and this is actually surprising considering he started playing only in season three here's where the pros start coming in seen some success at playing csgo but when he started playing but dude, wait, wait. Fortnite, it was like he was he he has to have um uh, vivid on this list he has to have vivid on this list because i remember there, there was an era where vivid was just winning every single tournament made for the game. I think what made him such a phenomenal player was the fact that he was extremely structured. During moving zones, he was one of the first to understand the importance of staying frontside, and during the early and mid game, he had plans unlike any other player. This way of playing extremely structured might have come from his previous days as a CS player, as being organized is a must if you want to succeed in that game. Bissell got second place in a lot of tournaments, like Summer Skirmish Week 3, Fall Skirmish Week 1 and 3, and most impressively, he got a second place at PAX West, where he took home 180,000 Dollars. Bro, now, the prize pools five, back then were crazy. That TXC was the best player. TXC is actually crazy. one of the most underrated players in all of Fortnite's history. But Bizzle was objectively speaking a bit better, and therefore he deserves to spot was for the best more player pub of season stomp five. Than, uh, in season six, there was a player who seemed unstoppable, winning events left, right, and center, all while streaming in front of tens of thousands of viewers. The player I'm talking about is, of course, look how many drafts he has. Much like a lot of the previous names I've mentioned, but, you know, it's history. funny. He's like he, he's. At this point, just to like, just to give you a perspective, at this point, even I know at this point, like since I trapped so many people, I would just put a trap on the roof and then flip the ramp. Like he's trying to force it on this wall. With other but if you just put the reals, trap on the roof and like flip the ramp, the dude's gonna die. And PUBG playing at the highest level to no surprise, and he literally enough, just put one in the other a box. rivalry with Ninja, even back in the age one days. The characteristics that made Tifu the best at the time was his incredible game sense and his world Bro, class Bro, low key, Tifu can't even build like that right now. I know he hasn't played in, he hasn't played build in a while, but uh, he was moving. I think it's fair to say that Tifu was the best aimer in the majority of Chapter One, with few ever even coming close to his level. For some honorable mentions for Season Six, we have. Sex Row, who could also be argued to be one of the best aimers Fortnite has ever seen, and Nate Hill, who was also a very impressive player alongside his duo Funk Bomb for the season. Remember me and uh, uh, Nick Murphy fighting Sex Row at Viking won Hill. Full skirmish finals, winning $400,000. And he also won two solo full skirmish weeks back to back, one of which where he was very sick, showcasing what kind of competitor he really was, winning at any cost. For season seven, we have the easiest pick so far. The best player of the Mitro. season was yeah. Mitro. Mitro 
Nitro yeah. is probably the player who has been the furthest ahead ever in competitive Fortnite. Season 7 marked the end of 2018, and Mitro ended the year in first place on the leaderboards. Almost 40 bombs. Massive margin. A skill level margin that will never be replicated by any other player ever again. That is naturally not to say that other players weren't incredible this season, because names like Poach, Vivid, and all the Team Liquid boys also performed okay, phenomenal. If, it, if Vivid no did isn't getting put because of because it's Mitro, I kind of agree with that. But I would say for North America, Vivid was the best at the time. It's like Mitro. The reason he was the best at this time was because of his insane hunger to compete. He challenged himself by playing against not only the best players in Europe, but he was also one of the first in the world to play cross-region, often playing against other great competitors on NA as well. Going into season 8, Epic had announced that the required age to compete would be lowered to 13 years old. Low-key, these 13-year-olds were probably better than, than the guys that were old enough to compete. It's just they weren't able to show it off. To 16, like it was in the first season of the game. And when these news hit, a new generation of talents yep. started performing super well in tournaments. And maybe you can predict Mongrel, what player Benji, became Mr. the best Savage. of Season 8 based on that information. The best player in Season 8 was Mongrel. Having the best mechanics, best aim, and a high level of game sense made Mongrel nearly unstoppable as a player. He was also not scared to stream for 10 plus hours daily, which helped evolve his skill even more. There were many notable names that started popping off in Season 8. Savage, Benji, and the Dubs are other honor mentions. None of them were at the level of Mongrel, but they were all phenomenal players regardless. Season 9 was an incredible season for competitive Fortnite, as this was the season where the solo and duo World Cup finals was to be hosted. There were so many high This has to be either Clicks or Vuga, right? Finals. Players like Tfue, Clicks, Stompy, and Dubs had all dominated the qualifiers, so expectations were high for these players. Looking back at this season, there was one player that stood far above the rest, and that player Buga. was Buga. Yeah. Buga won the solo world cup almost doubling the points of second place that was a complete domination and solidified one of the most dominant major esports tournament performances of all time although buga was unarguably the best player of season nine we can't isn't it crazy like the world cup the skill level at the time i think if you took <laughs> like your your av not average but like an unreal ranked player and you throw them in the world cup like you take them from now and you throw them to the world cup they'll do they'll do pretty good like just about anybody they'll just throw them in there they'll do pretty good like the game has just kept getting better and better and better like the players have kept getting better it's crazy but i will say this i think in the last year to two years the skill has slowly stopped increasing even though the gap is insane i think there's been a decrease in the skill level the best players who put four or five years into this game are burning out or playing less. And there is just a skill cap that we have like been working towards since 2017. I think people can keep getting better and more efficient with their edits and builds and moves and things like that. But I do think that it has slowed down significantly in the last year or two. Guys, speaking of the best players in the world, I want to talk about the best merch in the world because we are having our Cyber Monday sale for Metal Umbrella up to 60% off. This is the biggest sale ever. A lot of you have told me that you really enjoy Metal Umbrella, but the pricing sometimes prevents you from getting it. Well, now we're having up to 60% off from now until Wednesday for Cyber Monday. Just go to MetalUmbrella.com, check out something you like, and let me know if you end up getting anything so I can personally thank you. Let's get back to the video. And forget to mention Aqua as well. Aqua won the Duo World Cup alongside Nyrox, who also, by the way, played phenomenally at the LAN event. I'm pretty sure if we're ever to have another official World Cup, no one will even come close to the performance of Buga in 2019. Yeah. And even today, in smaller, less important tournaments, very few players have been able to replicate the same level of dominance. For the last season of Chapter 1, the choice for the best player is yet again quite easy. Now, a lot of people, people would say that Mongrel was the best player of season X, but that is not the objective truth. You see, Mongrel had a teammate by the name Benji Fishy, who didn't only dominate alongside him in the FNCS Benji had a lot of clutches but he also X. went on to win multiple solo cash cups in season X. I think the reason a lot of people do classify Mongrel as the best player of season X is because of his remarkably funny streams and his unique way of playing and utilizing weapons like the infantry rifle better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. You could make the argument that Mongrel carried 
in trios. But let's be real, all three, Mitro, Benji, and Mongrel, played exceptionally well, and I'm not sure you can say that any one of them, quote unquote, carried the trio. Other players that absolutely needs to be mentioned when talking about season X are Aqua, Sexro, Sate, and Seth, who all played at the peak of competitive, but not quite at the level of the golden trio, Mongrel, Mitro, and Benji. Moving on to chapter two. I wonder what Sate is up to the these best days. player was Unknown Army. I don't know. Guys, Unknown Army is an exceptional player, but I'm just going to say this, <laughs> this uh, pick right here. It's true. He was the best player in terms of chapter two, season one, but Epic was smoking some illegal drugs with what they did to aim assist during chapter two. What to say other than this guy was unreal to watch. Look, 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 look. He's, see, he's catching the guy in the hay using aim assist. Look. His aim in season one is unlike anyone else I've ever seen. Of course, he was a controller player, but that didn't change the fact that he had the best aim out of anyone in the world. And he used that to his advantage in a way that won him multiple tournaments, including the FNCS squad grand finals of season one. Season one of chapter two was the longest season of Fortnite ever, and players like Macwood, Chapix, and Commandment could also be in the discussion for best player of the season. After having played squads in season one for 128 days, people were ready to grind season two as duos was announced as the main game mode, something most competitive players was very happy with. Crowning the best player in season two is ridiculously hard as there were three players who all performed Epic will, right? similarly. The first was the high ground king, Sate. Sate and Saf won the duo FNCS grand finals and took home $44,000 as a result of that. In season two, it was two FNCSs, one duo FNCS, like we just talked about, and one solo FNCS invitational. And in the solo FNCS, Sate placed ninth, taking home an additional $8,000. Now, you could also consider Andelex or Aqua as the best player from Season 2. Andelex won the duo FNCS, just on the European region, winning $70,000. And on top of that, he got 7th in the solo finals, winning $30,000 more, to make his Season 2 earnings $65,000. And Aqua stayed impressively consistent throughout the entire season, both in FNCSs and Cash Cup tournaments, getting 4th in duo FNCS and 3rd in solo FNCS, combined making him $92,000. $500. Bro, the prize pools eyes, back then were so much higher, bro. I don't blame Epic for like reducing the prize pool though, especially since a lot of those bigger prize pools were like in-person events. Not around this time, but like in the early days. And it's it's always better to save the big money for in-person events because there's the least amount of like shenanigans that can happen. Was the best player of season two. But if you think Sate or Andelex deserves that spot, then I don't blame you. Because winning FNCS obviously is ridiculously hard, but Aqua's consistency is the reason for my pick. In season three, there was a particular someone who stole the show competitively speaking, and his name was Tayson. If you guys don't remember, season the rise three of was Tayson, the season bro. where there was a solo FNCS. And Tayson didn't only win that, but he also won his heat to qualify to the grand finals. Him securing first in the grand finals made him $80,000. And he did so dominantly winning with 60 points when second place only got 49. Now, I think it's important to also note how incredibly good Coop was in this season. He won FNCS on NA and then just five days later won the DreamHack solo finals as well. Major respect to both players, but in my eyes, Taysom was the best player in the world in season three. Season four, or also known as Stark season, Stark season. was one of the most fun seasons of competitive Fortnite ever. And a lot three? of players played at an extremely high level this season. Three dropped a 50 bomb in Unreal winners, solo squad. I gotta see, season, I gotta see that video when he drops time it. Period. And I wouldn't hate on that opinion at all. Or you could go another direction and say that the NA FNCS winners, Mero, Day, and Reverse were the best in the world. Because both of these trios had players who could arguably be considered the best in the world. But for me, one player stands out and kind of reminds me of how good Unknown was in Season 1 of Chapter 2. And that player is Reet. For those of you who followed competitive Fortnite back then, this season, as you might remember, was a season where Reet was considered the best fighter in the world by many, and he put on a show in every single tournament he participated in, hitting 200 pumps like no other, having peace control at the very highest level, and just eliminating the best players in his region with absolute ease. Reet was, and still to this day, is a unique player with an impressive skill set that very few come close to matching. And because of his Sheesh. unique ability to absolutely destroy anyone, I consider him the best player of Season 4. Sans 
season is up next, and crowning the best player of this one is a bit tough. Because Canada? on the one side, you have Chapix, who won EU FNCS and played phenomenally through the season. His teammates, Hen and Janice, are also in the discussion for the best player of season 5. But without Chapix, Janice and Hen definitely would not have won FNCS. Chapix is a structured and strict IGL, perfect for someone like Hen and Janice. On the other side, you have Jack, who won NA FNCS and played impressively consistently throughout the season. Jack was actually number one on the PR leaderboards for the entirety of 2020, being one of the most underrated players in know Fortnite's that. history. However, one player stands out just a tiny bit more than both Chapix and Jack, and that player is Bucky. In the tournaments, Bucky got Bucky? top 100 in, his average I killed Bucky. was 7th. He got 3rd place in Grand Finals. I killed finals, him last season, he was Kamara easy. And, Macwood, and with that consistency, he is my pick for the best player of Season 5. There's a lot you can say about Primal Season, but crowning the best player in the world from Season 6 is actually not that hard. The best player was 4CR. His run in Season 6 was extreme to witness. Not only did he get a third place in FNCS Finals, but he also won a duo Dreamhack by basically playing solos against the best players in Europe. He won two Trios Cash Cups, as well as a Trios Dreamhack Cash Cup Extra. And on top of all of that, him, Tayson, and Nate won their FNCS Heat to qualify to the FNCS Grand Finals. I do need to say that Queasy is a very honorable mention for Season 6, as he, alongside Trulex and Jerky, took home the FNCS win on EU. But the thing about Queasy is that he always makes his teammates such great players, to the point where it's hard for him to individually pop off as hard as players like 4CR. You can say that that attribute makes Queasy the best player of Season 6, and I would have quite a hard time disagreeing with that statement. But in my eyes, this is all very CR valid so far. individually the best player at this time. This guy obviously did best, his he research. That title. Going into Season 7, Sentinel had already gotten three second places back to back to back in FNCS Grand Finals. Surely, if he got a fourth <laughs> second place, he would be considered the best player Bro had a of Season second 7. Place, well, uh... yes, I will give it to Senta today. I think when Senta is grinding, he, he had a is second one of the place, very best uh, players curse. in the world. And in Season 7, getting his fourth consecutive second place in Grands, he gets the title of the best player of that season. What makes Senta such a crazy player is how he IGLs endgames, his communication, and his strategies are some of the best in the world. If I had to mention a few other players in contention for the title in Season 7, it would be Kiriachi, who won the EU FNCS Grands, or Dukes, who won on NA. And taking home the title of best player of the final season of Chapter 2, we have Seti. Seti won the EU oh, yeah. FNCS Grands with an insane margin over second place. And to be honest, all three players in Seti's trio, or in other words, him, Kami, and Teak, could take home the best player award for Season 8. That is how dynamic this team was. They all played so well together that it almost seemed like they were one individual player. They knew each other's strengths and weaknesses in all different situations, it seemed like. Seti, Kami, and Teak also went on to get a second place in Grand Royale, only 25 points behind the Tayson, Hen, and Chapix. You could very possibly also consider Buga the best player of the season as well, as he won on NAEs with Mas and Mero in the Trios Grand Finals, and he also later went on to win the Grand Royale with Mero and Dukes. But compared to how Seti was playing during Season 8, I don't think Buga was as good, although he also played at an extremely impressive level all throughout the season. Some other honorable mentions are Day and his trio Jamper and Tragix, who got second in both the trios FNCS and the Grand Royale. Really impressive consistency from this trio too. Bro, and this endgame is hectic as hell, one what? One of these three individual players was also the best in Season 8. In Chapter 3, Season 1, Buga and Mero once again won FNCS, making them three-time back-to-back-to-back champions. You gotta give it to Mero. I personally think that Mero was the MVP yeah. of this season. A lot of people forget to mention Mero when Six talking about X the best FNCS players in the world. And I sadly think that is partially because he is on controller. Mero is generally one of the most clutch players Fortnite has ever seen, and he is able to consistently perform regardless of the situation he's in. Now, you could argue that Queasy or Hen, the EU FNCS winners of Season 1, were the best players of the season. But in my eyes, Mero dominated in a way that nobody else did at this time, and it was a blast to watch. I genuinely think if Mero was on Keep It A Mouse, he would get five times the respect he's getting, because his results have been out of this world, and it's about time Dude, that is crazy building for controller, time, holy crap. Opinion. Moving on to the second season of Chapter 3, the best player was Venno. At this time, Venno was honestly a different animal compared to everyone else. He played alongside Akko this season, and I think this duo pushed each other to just become the best players in the world. Don't get me wrong, there were a lot of other great players too, like Thomas HD, Peter Bot, and Malabuka. But nobody came close to the level that Venno was playing at. Venno and Aqua ended up winning the FNCS Grand Finals of this season, taking home $300,000 collectively, doing so by almost exclusively playing high ground and being dominant in doing so. For Season 3, I think the best player was Malabuka. Malabuka is truly a one-of-a-kind player, and during Season 3, he was able to pull off plays I don't think any other player could even come close to doing. 
He ended up winning Gamers 8 with Epic Whale and he also- You notice how much better like they got from chapter two to chapter three? A second place in the EU F Like when I was script. watching some of the chapter two highlights, even like when he was showing Re in chapter two season four, I was like, yeah, I can I can do that now. And then in finals that season. I think in chapter three, three like you, you really lose a lot of the even the sweaty players. And they were the FNCS winners on how good Europe. these guys Manons got. And Avery are also two honorable mentions as they went on to win it all on NA. And for the final season of chapter three, there were many contenders for the spa as the best player. This was the season with the FNCS invitational in North Carolina, and you could argue that either Cami or Seti was the best player this season. Ben on Queasy was also playing at an impressively high level all throughout the 76 days this one lasted. But one guy stood out heavily in my opinion and that player is called not only did center and Quald oh he did he was solo carrying like he was a pretty bad spot one v2 ing so by much far the mvp of that tournament clutching one v2s that shouldn't have been possible against the best players in the world and just pulling plays out of his pocket that were incredibly impressive to watch hopping into the most recent chapter chapter four we will begin talking about the hammer season or in other words season one this season had one of the most intense fncs grand finals ever on europe i remember watching this it was crazy only Easy. winning with a single point. More than Thomas HD and Madabuka. Even though Thomas and Madabuka didn't end up securing the win this season, I still think Thomas deserves the title for the best player of this one. Thomas is widely recognized as the best aimer in all of Fortnite, and seeing him play with the Thunder Shotgun and Red Eye AR just supports that claim even further. I think Taysen and Murstash also played at an air perfect level throughout the season, so I want to give them both an honorable mention. In season 2, we saw the most dominant FNCS Grand Finals performance ever, with Queasy and Venno winning 6 out of 12 games on EU and IJL getting the result of a 50% win rate in a lobby with the absolute best players in the crazy. world. That was crazy. That is crazy. Easy pick for the best player of season two. 50% win rate against really well the season, only the Russell best players in the world. Jason and Duke's energy. That's Naturally, actually ridiculous. None of these players got anywhere near the level of Queasy and Venno. For the second to last season on this list, my pick has to be Kanada. In season three, Kanada put on a show of yeah, both yeah, Kanada deserves it. content wise. Kanada ended up winning the season three FNCS Grand Finals alongside Agers who also was and still is a phenomenal player. They won this season with a 12 point lead ahead of Buga and Tretz. So any one of these two as well could be categorized as the best player of season three. But Kanada just had that little bit extra in my eyes. On Europe, the story was a little different as Swizzy and Putrick ended up winning. Swizzy, originally starting his career on Asia, was kind of a surprise winner. But after he moved to EU, he grinded super hard. And at the end of the season, he was able to get a big reward for all the hours put in, winning 200 grand collectively with Putrick. You think Swizzy was the best player of season three i would also completely i really miss siphon opinion, man because he played at the very peak of what was possible in competitive fortnite and for the final season of competitive fortnite so far chapter four season four i'm going to pick cami now season four obviously had what about the og FCS fortnite Global championships i pick uh ninja so or og fortnite best player well is totally understandable and maybe even objectively the right you want pick. a lot of cami because zero build I games i think he is totally unique in the way he plays at the highest level and practices if i had to name the first player that comes to mind when talking about ones I respect, Kami would be the first without a shadow of a doubt. He finds potential metas and tries so many different strategies. And on top of all of that, he seems to Faded never complain pigeon. about anything. I think Kami deserves the title for best player of season four, as him and Seti also went on to get second place at the FNCS Globals, winning 650,000. Guys, please let me know your thoughts. On this was a really, really well made and video. So Honestly, over I don't, I don't with disagree with any of these picks. Been enjoying the Obviously, some, videos. some picks can go either the way, but show it is by dropping a like. Has that helped? Yeah, guys, show this guy some love. This is actually a really well-made video. Marin TM on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.